Right, um, okay, so now we've established that both boundary layers, they grow over the surface. Uh, what did I show you that, the here? So you guys can see that the boundary layer thickness grows over the surface. So I'm going, let's say, from the leading edge to the training edge, and it grows in size. Well, there is a key question there. How does it actually grow? In what, in what form? Can we actually follow that form as we go along the surface, or can we not? And the good answer is, or the nice answer is, we, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Do you remember that slogan? No. You guys are asleep this morning. Yes, we can, yeah? Yes. Right. Um, yes, so. Give a diversion there. Okay, so if I have a uh, solid surface like this, as shown by the very thick line, and there is a boundary layer growing, uh, this is the thickness of the boundary layer. Okay. So the thickness itself, clearly, you guys can see, is a function of the x along the surface, as depending where you are. So here is a very small thickness. Here it grows more. And of course, at the training edge is where the highest boundary layer thickness is, as you'd expect. Okay. So the first thing we establish is delta is a function of uh, the distance along the surface. And it grows, clearly. Now, how does it grow? We come back to whether it's laminar or turbulent. So, what we can say, if we consider uh, this surface, which could be a wing surface, but remember I told you we're going to approximate everything from today on, for this module anyway, as a flat plate and of very, very small thickness or no thickness, if you like, at all. So, but that's a good approximation. So, in an incompressible fair where the density is constant and the boundary layer is um, laminar, yeah, here we go. Sorry, I didn't see that. So, if the boundary layer is laminar, we can express the, 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 the growth in the boundary layer with distance along the surface as delta x equals 5.2 times the distance where you are x, because, as I said, depending where you are, this delta will change. So, clearly, it's a function of x, divided by the square root of the Reynolds number at the x where you are, Okay, and that will give you the boundary layer at, uh, at any x. Okay, so for example, let's just do zero. We expect it to be zero. Clearly, that's zero. And of course, when x is the trailing edge, at the trailing edge, that's the full length. Clearly, that's where the, the, the biggest thickness is. Now, um, if, you, if you guys remember the definition of the Reynolds number based on a distance x or a length x, you know that that's density times the speed times the characteristic length x in this case. Remember, usually we use the chord, but it could be anything. We just use x here, because it, it depends where you are, divided by uh, dynamic viscosity. Now, if we substitute this definition here with the square root of it, uh, so you got x here, and you got square root of x in the bottom. You cancel one of, well, you got x and square root of x. The remaining is square root of x at the top. So basically what really effectively we're saying is that the boundary layer, if it's laminar, it grows proportional to square root of x. Is everyone clear? Yeah? No? I hope you can see that. So, um, yeah, that's, that's how it grows. And it, that's actually, it turns out to be a parabolic growth. So that's the case for a laminar boundary layer. For a turbulent boundary layer, uh, assuming... Uh, flat, flat plate, incompressible flow, uh, zero angle of attack. I forgot to say that, sorry. Uh, zero angle of attack as well. Then the boundary layer growth, if it's a turbulent boundary layer, it's given by this form. Don't tell me why, don't ask me why it's 0.383. That's, there's a lot of assumptions and a lot of theory behind that to get to that number, but just take it for now. So it's 0.383 times x divided by Reynolds number raised to the power 1 over 5, which is basically the fifth square. No, we, we can't say the fifth square. What do we call the, um, uh, I forgot it now in maths. What do we call it? You got the kind of the, uh, the square root, but with 5. What do we call it again? I forgot it in maths, to be honest. It's, you know what I'm talking about? So you got square root, but 5 is written here somewhere. Don't worry about it. Okay. 
So, uh, again, what we can see is that the boundary layer with the turbulent, well, the boundary layer and turbulent uh, boundary layer profile actually will grow as, in terms of x, uh, what are we, is proportional to x to the power of 4 over 5. Now, 4 over 5 is what? 0.8? Yeah? So the boundary layer lamina uh, turbulent is proportional to x to the power of 0.8. The other one is proportional to the power. What's the power of the root square of x? Half, yeah. So which one is bigger? 0.8, right? So clearly, this is why the, the, layer, the thickness of the boundary layer for turbulent clearly uh, grow thicker than the, one, the laminar one, which is x to the power and a half, 4.5. Okay, so this kind of, uh, I think, puts us in a good condition to... The final part of this will just show you further equations to use. I'm aware it's nearly half past, but if you guys don't mind what I will do, I'll just finish some of the equations, give you a little break, then we have an example uh, we can work through uh, if you want to stay. So let me just go straight away to part two. Uh, and basically, I'll show you some really important equations that we, we, you will need to use. Okay, so now we know there is a, 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 a laminar boundary layer and there is a turbulent boundary layer. The thickness, the way it grows depends on the type of that boundary layer. We know at least now for a flat plate how that boundary layer thickness grows with distance x along the surface. Now, uh, one thing that aerospace engineers use a lot is something called the shape factor. And from the name shape, clearly it tells you the shape of the boundary layer. So this is a non-dimensional number. So, um, so it's the ratio of the displacement thickness, which is basically a length, divided by the momentum thickness of the boundary. This is why those two parameters are uh, routinely used in boundary layer analysis. So taking those ratio gives you a number for H. And honestly, guys, all you need to know in general that if, uh, if H is about 2.6, then, sorry, then your, your boundary layer is lamina. If your H is about 1.4, 1.3, then you know that your boundary layer is turbulent. Okay, that's it. So you can calculate, so if you know the displacement thickness, if you evaluate that integral and you get the momentum thickness from the integral, from the velocity profile, you calculate H, you will know straight away whether that's a turbulent or, or lamina boundary layer based on these numbers simple as that. So these are kind of, I'm sure if you read books, you will see them a lot. <coughs> All right. Uh, so if we were to plot this um, parameter, the shape factor, uh, along the distance or along the surface of a flat plate or a wing, for example. Now, in general, of course, I as I will show you, uh, typically we have the, the boundary layer starts forming and it's laminar and then it transitions to turbulent. Now, if we were to follow what happens to the H as the boundary layer is changing from lamina to turbulent, uh, hopefully this, this graph makes sense. So, what do you guys think H, uh, what do you, think, do you guys think the boundary layer here is? Come on, guys. What do you think the boundary layer here is? Lamina. Lamina, very good, because you guys can see it's 2.6 almost, roughly. So this is definitely along from the distance zero to this distance here, roughly, or a little bit more. We know from H, which is around 2.6, that definitely we have a boundary layer, which is lamina. Then there is this kind of a transition. There is always a bit of a transition between lamina to turbulent. But after that, it goes to, rim, and it goes to turbulent, and it goes to about 1.4. So we know this from here onwards, it remains at the same value, H 1.4, we know the boundary layer is fully, well, not fully, but is turbulent after that. So you guys can see just from the shape of plotting, H that, yes, um, it tells you the type of the boundary layer. Please remember if you're asked to plot this graph is, this is important because it shows you there's a transition region between uh, laminar and turbulent. Right, so now, come to the important part of calculations. Now, after all, we're aerospace engineers, we want to calculate things. And one of the important things we definitely need to calculate out of boundary layer is the uh, skin friction drag. 
that the boundary layer is causing you because that tells you how much power from the engine you need to overcome that. So again, if I'm just showing you, let's say we're modeling your wing as a flat plate and um, yeah, so the boundary layer, so there is a flow coming at your infinity, boundary layer grows with distance x, delta x as we know. Uh, at the leading edge, of course, there is no thickness, so it's zero, and it grows towards the trailing edge, whatever that value is. And we know, of course, that there is no slip condition at the wall. Okay, and for example, at this particular point here, that would be your boundary layer thickness at that point. Anyway, this is just all general. So, uh, to arrive, to show you just very quickly how to get to the skin friction drag, uh, we're actually going to start with um, kind of looking at this wall shear stress. So, this is the shear stress you're feeling, which is basically a pressure, but it's along the surface. Does anyone remember the symbol for shear stress? What do we use for shear stress symbol? Tau, very good, yeah. So, the wall shear stress, the region is the wall because that's we're interested really at what, how it's affecting the surface. So the wall shear stress can be defined. Again, there is a proof towards the end, but you can look at it. So there is, uh, the shear stress at the wall is rho u infinity squared d theta dx. Theta is the momentum thickness, and x is the distance along, uh, along the, 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 the surface, okay, as we go from leading edge towards trailing edge of the, uh, of the plate or the surface, okay? Now, this is the wall shear stress. Out of that, we can also define a local, because everything, as you guys can see, everything varies with x, so we can define global quantity or local quantity. So, this is clearly the local, the local uh, wall shear stress tau of the wall, and we can, out of that, define a, a local skin friction coefficient at a given point, x. So that turns out to be the shear stress itself divided by half rho u infinity squared, okay? Now, very simply, if you just substitute for tau by this here, you will just end up with CF, the local skin friction coefficient, as just twice d theta dx, that's it. Now, to get the, the skin friction force, which causes the drag, uh, we actually, what we do, we just integrate the wall shear stress along uh, along the distance x, so from 0 to x, um, let's any, any, any point x, that will be from 0 to x, the integral of the, the wall shear stress along that distance. The problem with that, it actually gives us, remember, it will only give us Newton per meter, so this is kind of force per uh, length, okay, so it's not Newton. And of course, in real life, uh, uh, an, a wing or a plate will have length as well as width, so we can integrate the integral over a surface rather than over a length. Okay, right. We can also, so this is the total skin friction force. Now, any force, any aerodynamic force can be written as half rho u infinity squared times an area times a coefficient, just like lift and drag. Similarly, we can write this force here, which is the drag force F, as half rho u infinity squared times because it's per unit length times x times cf. So what I'm writing really here for you is I'm already re-expressing cf in terms of f. So what, what I said already is f itself is half rho u infinity squared times uh, the distance x times cf. We're just rearranging for cf. Okay, so, uh, okay. Now, if we substitute for f with this integral here, and we substitute for tau by the definition of tau, Okay, and also tau is related to CF. I'll leave it to you as a nice homework. You can show that CF is 1 over X from 0 to X of the local skin friction coefficient. So the total skin friction coefficient over the surface, which is of interest to us, is 1 over X, the integral of the local skin friction CF. And then, um, finally, what we can show by putting things together um, there is an equation for CF here as well, which is 2 d theta dx, if you substitute for that as well. You can actually simply show that CF is actually 2 theta times, uh, sorry, 2 times theta divided by x. Theta is, of course, the momentum thickness, and x is the distance along the surface. So that's it. You can actually show that 
the total skin friction coefficient, which we need to calculate the force coefficient F, is actually just given simply by 2 theta divided by X, and theta is the momentum thickness. Now, the skin friction drag force on one side of the plate, so if you guys think about it like a wing, we have the upper surface and the lower surface, all right? So you will have skin friction on the upper surface, you have skin friction on the lower surface. So there are always two sides to any surface. But just on one side, uh, the drag will be half rho u infinity squared times the area of that surface times the force, uh, sorry, the skin friction coefficient CF. So clearly, to work out the drag on both surfaces, what do we need to do? So this is on one side. What's twice, two sides? Multiply by two, yeah? So the half goes, yeah, that's it. So this is on one side. So please remember that. So you need to multiply by two if you want the total drag top and bottom. Now, CF, we need to, make, we need to work out CF, okay? And if you know the area of the plate or your wing, whatever, and you know the free stream speed and density, you can work out the drag. It's as simple as that, really. Now, it all depends, however, on what type of boundary layer you have. So, very quickly, if you have a, a boundary layer which is laminar, I've shown you already in the part one that the uh, thickness varies in this case, okay? And we can show if you guys want to write down these equations. Um, now, whether you will be annoyed with me or not, but I kind of explicitly wrote them in three different ways. So you actually realize if you see them written slightly different in textbooks, you realize they're exactly the same thing. But I hope I'm not patronizing you by just writing them in kind of slightly different ways. All, they all mean the same. So the local skin friction coefficient c little f is given by this equation. So 0, 0664 uh, Reynolds number at position x raised to the power minus a half, which we can write as this, but raised to the power of half is just the square root of Reynolds number of x. As I said, I'm just being pedantic maybe, but just to make sure everyone understands that if you see them slightly different or written differently in textbooks, you realize they're just the same thing, okay? Now, the skin friction coefficient, capital C, capital F, this is the main one because that's the one we need to calculate uh, the drag. Okay, um, it turns out to be this number here, 0072 uh, to the Reynolds number. Oh, this is the turbulent one, apologies. Uh, to the uh, Reynolds number based on X to the minus a half, which is this one. And the momentum thickness over X given by this equation. Hopefully you guys can immediately see that indeed CF is theta over X and CF is just twice CF, little one. Anyway, it probably looks like a lot of equations at, at, uh, at, at once, but you will use a lot of these equations a lot and you just kind of get used to it. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'll just give you the equations for turbulent boundary layer. So if it's turbulent boundary layer, I've shown you already in part one that the thickness distribution with X is this way. The local skin friction coefficient is this equation. The total skin friction coefficient, which is used in calculating the drag force, is given this way. And you guys can see that there is a re kind of a, a reoccurring theme there in terms of the Reynolds number. There's always Reynolds number based on X raised to the power minus 1 over 5, whether the other one is Reynolds number x raised to the power minus a half, or divided by the square root. Uh, so you've got these equations here. Okay. Anyway, as I said, I'm being pedantic to write them in this different forms, but that's because, that's because you might see them slightly different written this way in textbooks, and you may not immediately recognize that it's exactly the same thing. Right, so now we've done, I've given you everything you need to know about calculating boundary layers. Oh, the time goes very quick. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I've got... Here's, I'm going to explain the mixed boundary layer, but I've got an example here for you guys. I'll leave this for you to go through it. I've given you how to solve it, roughly, but you will need to do the calculations. So at least I've shown you how to do it. I, I, I can say I, I won't have time to go through it, but 